So how about those uh, Broncos and Bills last night? Yeah, that's that's going to be one for the books for sure. I uh, I was pretty shocked at that. I thought they would have a chance just because I know how Buffalo's been playing this year, kind of uh, just coming down to their opponent's levels and just not executing yeah. well enough. But um, yeah, that... <laughs> I wasn't expecting that ending, that's for sure. No, not at all. That that field goal really it really just made everything so much more insane. And the fact that you brought up last week <laughs> yes. was like you guys we we beat you, Miami beat you guys by 50 points, complete what do they call it a 70 burger now? I don't know. But um and then you guys beat a team that we lost to and then beat another team we lost to. So it's just, it's weird how that works. But, uh, yeah, it's still <laughs> it's incredible of insane. Yeah, I know that's I, I, I just couldn't believe it. I'm, I'm still at a loss of words and kind of still coming down off. The, I, I feel bad for our dad because he's yeah. been with Buffalo for decades now. And, um, that they're a team that I root for in every game except when they play Denver, of course. And uh, yep. yeah, watching him go through that was pretty painful. And it, it was weird because I had that uh, uh, mixed level of emotions because here I am really proud of Denver. And then I'm also seeing the frustration and the irritation of, you know, Buffalo yeah. screwing over uh, themselves like time and time again with turnovers. And it's just, it's insane. So the, we'll have to see how that turns out with Ken Dorsey getting fired and and, and going from there. But um, yeah. anyway, this is sure. not obviously a sports talk show. This is tech talk, but uh, we wanted to get that off. I wanted to get off that my chest for sure. But um, Microsoft is running a sweepstakes starting November 13th to December 14th of this year that allows you okay. the chance to win a Wonka inspired Xbox Series X and storefront display. Uh, no, the whole entire thing is just a display. The Series X itself is not edible or anything like that. Oh, good. But uh, you also have a chance to win an X box of chocolates in correlation with their partnership with Warner Brothers Pictures' upcoming film Wonka, set to release December 15th, which is the day after the sweepstakes ends. And okay. uh, it includes the actual box includes uh, five truffles titled as, I guess, boosters maybe you could kind of call it to okay. co coincide with your gaming aspirations if, if you want to call that uh they have some such as button masher which is more of like an espresso based flavor uh your citrus sidekick which is orange infused chocolate combination uh wonka for the win okay. achievement hunting extra kick and to top it all off the box of chocolates also includes a fully edible chocolate Xbox controller, which that one was probably the one that impressed me the most. Um, yeah, I can only imagine. <laughs> Gosh. Essentially, all any of the eligible participants participants would have to do is follow Xbox on Twitter and retweet the official Xbox sweepstakes post. Uh, obviously, I would encourage you to check the fine print first just to make sure you qualify based on your age, location, residence. Uh, but outside of that, it seems like a pretty sweet deal. <laughs> I'm not sure how Willy Wonka and Microsoft correlate, but I, I'm willing to have an open Neither mind about this. Um, Me too. <laughs> I mean, get chocolate. That's nice. It's a a done deal, I suppose. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I was I haven't showed my wife because she's she's a um, Game Pass subscriber and she's big into gaming. Mm -hmm. But uh, I'm sure she'd probably like it. I'm I'm kind of more curious on who's making the chocolate. Actually, seems dumb, but that's <laughs> yes. You know, these, these are the questions we need to ask here on Stern's Tech Talk. Who very important <laughs> is making and providing this chocolate for this yep, sweepstakes? Hershey's, Ghirardelli. <laughs> yeah, it's a very it's crazy, valid question. So. Well. A couple of things that are correlated with each other is Nintendo and Sony, and they are once again hmm. partnering up to create a movie based off of an all-time favorite game, The Legend of Zelda. Hmm. What we know thus far is that it will be directed by Wes Ball, who is mostly known for directing the well-known Maze Runner movies. Uh, there's oh, no release okay. date, but 
we have rumors that now it's in development or it's soon to be in development uh, here in a bit. But uh, yeah, I thought this was pretty interesting. I'm My wife is actually a big Zelda fan. Um, I kind of got into it a little bit. Um, but, you know, I don't know what you thought of this, but pretty cool. I never really got into Zelda, actually. So maybe that's no. just because we're brothers and that was just not our thing. No. Um, my wife has, though. So I think that might be something she'd be interested in hearing. Um, but aside from that, there's you said there's no specific release date time frame at all. It's just right now it's in uh It's develop- about okay. to be in development. I don't think it was actually even a rumor except with Sony and Nintendo are actually going to start it in a bit here. So uh, Okay, gotcha. Yep. All right. Um, just as a quick recap reminder, uh, Google will be deleting inactive Google accounts coming December 1st. So just be aware of that in case you have a dormant account that still might contain personal info you'd rather not lose, such as photos, documents, emails. Yep. Uh, we've mentioned this before on the show, but again, we would just want to remind you guys it's coming up on December 1st. It's important to remember that the first accounts Google will target in the purge are those that were used for initial signup and had never used again after that. So okay. you can easily avoid this by, you know, of having your account deleted by um, just simple activity like YouTube, emails and such, just just to let them know that you're still active um, to avoid all that. So, OK, cool. Yep. Walmart is bringing back their sensory friendly shopping, but this time. It will not only be on Saturdays from 8 to 10 in the morning, but also on weekdays from 8 to 10 in the morning. Oh, cool. Yeah, it's going to be, it started back up on the 10th, so we kind of missed it just a little bit. Uh, so it was last week. And Walmart states that it has no plans to get rid of it anytime soon. Uh, we mentioned. Oh, wow. Yeah, I know, right? We mentioned all this a couple months back, and it only lasted for like, what, a week or two, JD, I think? Um, um, I can't remember. I think it will. I think the problem was is that it was. It might have been like a month, but it was only on like certain days and like you like they normally do. It's in the morning mm-hmm. time. Um, yeah. But yeah, it wasn't like it didn't feel like you got that much of it. So, yeah, um, but that's good to hear because I actually did. I never did get a chance to try it out. I do want to go there and kind of just enjoy the peace and the quiet because um, as I've mentioned, I'm someone who has a little bit more um, sensitive senses. <laughs> Yeah, but, um, for sure. Well, it will also be returning to obviously the U.S. Um, and then Puerto Rico stores. So, okay, cool. um, it's available to pretty much every Walmart, as far as I'm aware. And uh, yeah, we'll have to. I never actually got a chance to do this, so we'll have to definitely uh, go out early in the morning Saturday and uh, check it out. Probably be relaxing. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> Uh, before we jump into deals, though, it looks as though Verizon customers will soon be able to jump in on a perk where you can obtain the ad-supported subscriptions of Netflix and Max, formerly HBO Max, for only $10. Now, wow. some of you are probably saying, well, that's you're still paying for it, so what's where's, where's the advantage? Well, outside of the perk, one will run you $9.99 and the other will run you $6.99. And if you factor in tax and everything like that, that's almost $10 savings right there. Yeah, it's true. Now, I also do know that for some of you, it doesn't seem that great because it's still ad supported. But for those who are okay with that, it's a decent offering. Uh, Now, this has yet to go live. So according to Wall Street Journal, it does still seem to be in the works. Just pay attention to any updates from Verizon and um, you'll be able to go from there and actually sign up and enroll in that. So. Hmm. I think I like that deal a little bit better than what uh, T-Mobile has to offer because they do like split certain things. So like you you don't really get a bundle. You just get one of something or one of something else. Yeah, I don't know. It kind of it depends because I do like the fact that with T-Mobile and their option with Netflix, Mm -hmm. there's no ads. So it is it is like the base plan of like you don't get all the HD or 4K or whatever like that, but you at least get access with no ads. So I guess it depends on what you want. You want split with ads or just one with none. So depends. Okay. Hmm. Well, we'll go ahead and move on to deals here. And the first one we have is this is from Best Buy, the Canon EOS R5 mirrorless camera. Uh, It was three thousand eight hundred ninety nine, which is thirty nine hundred. And now it's three thousand three hundred ninety nine and or thirty four hundred, and that's a five hundred dollars savings. And you can also obviously do a monthly payment 
um, with them for like 24 months of financing. So uh, but that's a pretty good deal right there. Yeah. And then also actually over at Best Buy, they have the OnePlus 11. That's $150 off. And there is no activation catch with that. That's You can either do activation right away or later on. That deal is actually good both ways. So Sweet. But um, back to news. You had something on Apple? Yep. So Bloomberg has reported quite a few things these last couple of weeks regarding iOS 18. Now, I know, especially here at Stern's Tech Talk, we don't like to talk immediately about the next thing when we just got the first thing. Uh, but uh especially when the first thing needs more fixes but <laughs> yeah and we'll, we'll get to that here in a second so um not ios 17 but uh two things apple is delaying 18 to fix the bugs that are set within the update uh, and this will allow the de- developer release to be more fluid and made with less bugs which would in turn allow for an even more refined rc release come that yes, fall that's right uh, the yep. second thing is that, according to German, Apple has stated that 18 will be the most ambitious and compelling, that was a quote from them, uh, update in years. I would say that most people like myself would love to have Siri as one of the forefronts of the update. We kind of talked about how they would be developing AI into Siri more and making her more fluid and able to kind of have some human language in, in a sense. Um, after all, it is one thing that uh, Apple's constantly mentioned a lot in the last year's. Uh, or so regardless anything regarding the update remains to be seen but all we can do now is just ponder this info right now so yeah yeah that that first one uh, i did see that and uh it was kind of interesting that yeah they they took a i don't remember when it started but it um it was just like a week that they took to delay the actual feature advancements of iOS 18 mm-hmm. uh, just to work out all those bugs so once that good. week was over they resumed yeah, it was really good that they were able to do that. Uh, I, I believe uh, Cred Figury, he was at the, the forefront of that uh, push yes. and that move. So in the end, I don't know what that really says. I'm not sure if that makes it seem like, okay, is iOS 18 going to be more stable than iOS 17? Or does it just mean that 18 was so far gone that they actually had to take time to you know hone back on all the feature advancements? and say, hey, we need to fix this before it becomes one of the worst ones ever, which is interesting because you're saying that there's this is supposed to be the most bold, ambitious upgrade yeah. to date, and that's kind of well, correlating in, in with, a okay, there's a lot time. that's being added. Yeah. Um, so it kind of depends on the perspective there. Yeah, and the other thing I would add to that is maybe it's also because they're learning from their mistakes. Like, I don't know how Apple has like what their order of operation is for producing an ios update so like if they take it in like say a couple years ago and work on it refine it and then you know they do repeat the same process over and over maybe they're now changing it from like let's just drop the ball not really work on it thoroughly and let's actually try and make sure this is i really i really JD, I need to make a shirt that just says refined, Stern's tech talk underneath, because we use that word so much. Um, refined, seriously. Um, and I think learning from past mistakes is important. And maybe that's one of the things that Apple's doing here because of all of those. I mean, you saw it. 17.1.2 was literally for solving that whole transferring data issue in iPhone 15. So, um, yeah, this might be a learning lesson for them, maybe. I don't know. Yeah, we'll have to wait and see. I'm not, I don't know. There's not enough rumors to indicate, you know, what's going to happen and if that's enough to get me excited. But for right now, I have no, at this point in time, I am so over the excitement of iOS upgrades because I really want to get to that point where it is at a stable. Agreed. Battery health is great yep. and everything like that. So that that's really where I'm at. I will say this, though, before we move on to the next topic. Mm-hmm. Uh, Watch OS, that update that they released uh, last week, I believe it was, that has definitely made an improvement on my battery life. Good. I've noticed that tremendously. Um, I think... Back when I first installed WatchOS 10 on the beta, um, I was getting sub 24 hours of battery life. It was like down to like 2019, somewhere around there. And that mm. was with always display off. Wow. So if I turned that on, it would drop down even further. 
Um, now I'm actually up to 30 plus hours with always on display off, which is great. Um, that's good. I've I've kind of just had to do that because of the battery health on my watch. So I'm just I don't really see the point of AOD anyway to a certain extent on a watch. So I'm okay with it. I'd rather have that battery life for you know fitness and exercises and stuff. So well, good. It's good to hear. Yep. But uh, jumping back to Xbox, actually, uh, they're implementing notifications for games that will soon be removed from a Game Pass and. Hmm. Some may wonder, like, what's the deal with that? I mean, if it's going to be removed from Game Pass, you know, that's it. There's nothing you can do about it. The reason is because, one, it allows you to, uh, you know, that if, if it's being removed, oh, I'm going to play it more and see if I can finish it or try to get as many achievements and accomplish, accomplishments done yeah. before that happens. The other side of that is, for some, it would allow them, if they want to cash in on the 20% discount that Xbox offers for games that are currently in the Game Pass collection. So oh, there's okay. that, yeah, there's there's that double-sided, um, you know, advancement. Hey, this is going to happen, and, you mm-hmm. know, you have some options here to try to, you know, make the best of it. Yeah, it sounds like, uh, to your second point there, it sounds like it might be a way for Microsoft to gain a little bit more money because... As Possibly, a user, yeah. you don't want to lose out on having a game. And if you get that 20% off, that's a good deal right there. So I, I'm not reading too yeah. much into that, but it just it seems like from what I'm hearing, it could be that option as well. Well, the other thing that I, th- I think is good, it, it, it's really funny because we never talk about, well, I don't want to say never, but we rarely ever talk about things that Netflix does good. Um, and I, this is, I feel like, something that they implement well, is letting you know when shows or movies are being yeah, removed from their true. catalog. And so I think Xbox doing this is a really welcome feature from, you know, Game Pass uh, yeah. gamers. So For sure. Um, we have visual leaks of the OnePlus Watch 2 prototype. Uh, as you'll see with the following images, uh, there really is not much of a change to this device. However, there are some key differences. So according to the leak, the display will house a 1.43 inch display, which is just 0.04 inches larger than its predecessor. I know, hardly a difference there. Uh, (laughs) On the side of the watch, there are actually two bumps that seem to indicate two physical buttons. So that's kind of interesting. It's also been rumored to have the uh, Snapdragon W5 Gen 1 chip. Uh, This Hmm. is not a super interesting rumor, but it's kind of cool nonetheless. Uh, we have seen yeah. OnePlus's capability for improving their craft. We saw that with the OnePlus Open. Both you and I agreed 100% that it's probably one of their best things they ever made. So hopefully we see that here as well. Um, but it's well, we'll just have to see how that looks <laughs> uh, fully. Um, but yeah, it's it's kind. Of, I don't remember that model. It, was the first gen available in the states? I don't think so, actually. I didn't think it was. My no. question is, is if it had, I don't remember what the first one had. If the second one has the W5, is that a possible indication it might be available for this in the US? So as the article kind of talks about, the, the person who wrote the article said that basically he doesn't feel that this specific device earns a W5 Gen 1 chip because it still uses RTOS and uh, it doesn't have Wear OS, which is predominantly the most used uh, software for a watch, uh, which, I mean, I kind of agree with in a sense, uh, but I don't I don't feel like one software I, determines your chipset in a sense. I, I get it in a s- kind of, but like, I don't know. It's a, as long I as I definitely as see where he's coming from or she. Um, oh, you do? That totally makes sense. Yeah, I get that totally. Because here's the thing, um, or unless you're coming from a different angle, but if that watch doesn't have Wear OS, it doesn't make any sense to bring it to the States. Because I feel like, even though people are, you know, always conning Wear OS, I feel like it's making some advancements. And obviously, their collaboration with Samsung and everything, I feel like that's also helped too. So, and honestly, yeah. if it doesn't have Wear OS, that's one more reason for me not to get it. That's also fair, In my yeah. mentality. So, that, that, there's that to it. Um, I mean, I, I'm glad it has the W5. Uh, that's a really good chip to have. Um, I, I feel like that helps with 
battery life and such. But mm-hmm. yeah, in the end, um, <laughs> that kind of dropped my expectations a little bit. So yeah, basically, that's just me though. Yeah, I actually didn't think <laughs> about that. Um, we'll have to see if there's any more rumors that actually indicate whether that's going to have the RTOS or Wear OS. Yeah. It'll probably be a clear. Um, It will probably be made clear as to whether that will be in the States or not. But again, we'll have to see. Yeah. Yeah. Well, closing out this episode, we've got some interesting news here. Uh, Nothing is set to create a disturbance in the force, if you will. Um, According to the CEO, Carl Pei, he and his team have worked in collaboration with Sunbird to cultivate a way for users to communicate with their Nothing Phone 2 to iPhones while being able to enjoy popular iMessage features such as group chats, live typing indicator, um, full res video sharing or media sharing, uh, voice notes, as well as feature additions like uh, read receipts and message reactions and replies. Now, nice. the app is called Nothing Chats app, and they have just announced this Tuesday, the 14th. And essentially what this does and how this works is when you set it up, it'll prompt you to create or sign in with your Nothing account. And then you'll sign in with your Apple ID, or you can create one or set it up if you need to as well. You don't have to have an Apple device. That's oh, cool. one of the great things about it. Okay. And then after that, you'll proceed with syncing a virtual contact card and then everything should just work the way you would expect it to with iMessage. Hmm. The biggest problem that users who are privy to this understanding will point out is that you're basically signing your Apple ID into what we presume is going to be a Mac somewhere on location where Sunbird has their network hub based. And then it communicates through that. And that's really where the catch-22 is. Uh, Nothing in Sunbird claim that this is all end-to-end encrypted and that your Apple ID credentials aren't stored anywhere, which is great. Mm -hmm. But how believable is that? I mean, we're kind of taking pay at his word. And I know that people are going to argue, well, we're kind of taking Tim Cook at his word, too, over the years. And I get that. That's... But this is something new. This is something a little more sketchy where, you know, we, we've become accustomed to Apple and I feel like they've yeah, they've put themselves in that position to be trustworthy, at least in most cases. Um, it's one company utilizing another company's um, software or whatever, basically. And that can be, yes. it can be complicated. It can cause a lot of issues. And um I don't know that that it. I, I did see the article. It does feel a little off-putting. Well, the idea there is great, yeah. and I I love the idea of trying to bring <sighs> Apple's stinginess down to a level of devastation, which man. I always love. <laughs> but uh, I don't think this is the best way to go about it. I don't. I mean, I mean, I've uh, I've tried to go through Sunbird before. I've tried to test them out in their beta phase. Uh, I never actually fully mm-hmm. went through with it, though. Um, but I don't know. I think I think this is probably the only option to go with right now, if that's what you're wanting to do. Uh, and it's fully worth noting that this is only available on the Nothing Phone Two, at least as of now. I'm not sure if they're going to okay. you know, have it backwards compatible for the Phone One. That's yet to be determined. Um, But outside of that, I mean, that's the gist of it. Uh, And I think if anything, this could, might be a final dagger into the final push for Apple to adopt RCS. Yes. Because that would allow them to still complete the encryption through messaging, but kind of give them that control that they preferably want. Yeah. uh, Within a certain extent. Um, without having to worry about oh people are going to jump to android just because they want you know the blue bubble well i mean if you want rcs and you want an android that's already available exactly but um this is kind of one of those well i feel like i'm being left out of this kind of chats click uh and and we've already talked about on the show of you know how many iphones the youth has 
in in the in America. So there's just all that to consider, and I'm kind of excited about this, only in the sense that I feel like this is really trying to push Apple. Like, hey, uh, I think even Riley, you were you were going to actually have a topic on here about how Google is trying to leverage the. Um, what is yeah. that? The DMA, the Digital Markets Act yep. uh, in Europe to try to help Apple, you know, get it in gear. So, uh, yes. yeah, I, I just uh, think that this is probably, I, I feel like Carl Pay is one of those people that he's kind of the kind of CEO I like to see succeed. Uh, and it's kind of sad to see what happened with him in OnePlus, but um, it's I like where he's going at least. Yeah, it's a step in the right direction, I yes. think. And sooner or later apple's just gonna have to really settle on this because you're gonna get and and i think this is also gonna cause a lot more people to be like hey actually that is something that i would like why isn't apple doing this um people's eyes gonna be uh opened up a bit more to this and it'll just apple have to bend the knee i think a little bit here and it's it's just it's so annoying that they just stoop so low to be stubborn and be like no you don't get this and, exactly. um, and I, yeah. I think if anything, that would also help, you know, open other companies up to being like, oh, well, how can we, is there another ways that we can adopt this to try to get, yeah. you know, the iPhones and the Androids to work together? So there's that aspect to it as well. Because we've had in history where someone kind of lets loose, does something nice, and another company's like, well, they're doing something nice. And if we don't do something nice, maybe customers will think that we're the ones that are being stingy. So then it's kind of like this sort of domino effect where like, you know, you get out of a helping hand, another company does the same thing because they don't want to lose customers. That's kind right. of or the even way... Or just improve upon it. Exactly, right. yeah. approving upon it. That's kind of the way that a consumer base works is you don't want to lose customers based upon something that you've, you're have you not doing or trying to help uh, in that. Uh, so, yeah, it's. I, I really hope that this actually does come to fruition with Apple. Yeah, for sure. I know we hit a little bit of a mini debatable topic there but yeah. um in the end that really does do it for this week's episode uh, we certainly hope you guys enjoyed it this is jd and riley and we will catch you guys in the next one peace out